In Laboratory 11, we will be looking at reflection and refraction. Specifically, we will be looking at the relationship between the object distance for an object in front of a mirror with the image distance of the image as seen behind the mirror. That will be the first part of this laboratory. In the second part of the laboratory, we will look at apparent depth, how far underwater an object appears to be, and that will lead to a calculation of the index of refraction for water. In this first part, we'll be using a plane mirror, plane as in flat. In this case, I'm using a piece of a mirror tile, a 12-inch tile. It's actually a mirror. If you were to do this at home, you would have to use your own mirror and adjust the lab as necessary. For an object, I'm using a bottle of turmeric. If the object could be anything. The bottle is sitting there on the ruler at the 10 centimeter mark. You can see both the bottle and, if you look in the mirror, the image of that bottle. I'm going to start out at about 10 centimeters as seen here. I happen to be using a meter stick just to make life a little easier, but you could use rulers. And I'm looking to see how far behind the mirror the image of the turmeric bottle appears to be. And I'm placing a ruler as seen here at where it looks like the image is located behind the mirror. This is happening behind the mirror. And so I want to know the distance of the image, or the distance the image appears to be behind the mirror. And here you can see it's, it's close to 10 centimeters. I'll get the exact numbers in uh, a table when I come back, maybe about 9.5 uh, centimeters, roughly. I then move the turmeric bottle out to 20 centimeters from the mirror. The bottle is now 20 centimeters away from the front of the mirror. And I look in the mirror and I try to see where it looks like the image of the bottle is located. And if I measure that distance, I get about 18 centimeters. Here I've moved the bottle out to 30 centimeters from the mirror. And again, I'm going to look in the mirror. Um, this is what I'm seeing. I'm moving my head back and forth, and I'm trying to get the ruler to line up with the image of the turmeric bottle. See the bottom of the bottle? The bottom of the bottle and the ruler should move together if I've got the right location. And then I write that down as the image distance. Here you see an image distance of about 29 some centimeters. That's the image distance. The object distance the distance that the bottle actually is away. The bottle fell down, but there's a 29. You can see that. I've moved the bottle out to 40 centimeters from the mirror. And I'll then measure the image distance again behind the mirror. An image distance of about 39.5 some centimeters. I'll write all of this down as I go and put it in a table. Now at 50 centimeters from the mirror, I see a distance of about 48.5 some centimeters behind the mirror. Again, to do this, I have to look in the mirror, as seen here, and I'm looking to see where the image appears to be behind the mirror. That may take some really long arms or ruler. One last data point. What if the turmeric bottle is up against the mirror? A distance of zero centimeters. How far behind the mirror is the image? I would argue that if it's zero in front, it's zero behind, that there is no difference in the image and object distance. That means our data will go through the origin at zero, zero. In the second part of the laboratory, we will look at the apparent depth of a coin below the surface of the water. That's an important word there, surface of the water. That apparent depth will lead to a calculation of the index of refraction for water without having to do any trigonometry as is done in a traditional lab. The coin will be a $1 Sacagawea coin. Put that in the bottom, but the coin could be anything. This lab may be harder to do at home 
because you might not have containers deep enough to get good data. The very bottom of the container is where the ruler is placed at zero. Looking in the top, this is what I see. I see the coin at the very bottom of this container. And as I move my eye back and forth, the coin will appear to not actually be all the way down at the table, but a little bit higher up on above the table, if you will. You really have to see it to understand this essentially optical illusion, but the water makes the coin appear closer. I'm pointing it where it looks like the coin is. Now, the full depth of the water runs from where the coin is. See the coin there at the bottom? There's the coin at the bottom of the container. This is going to be the actual depth of the water, the object depth of the water. And the object depth, the actual depth of the coin, is 48 centimeters. The coin is under 48 centimeters of water. It's 48 centimeters underwater. But my finger is pointing to where it looked like the coin was. That's where I saw the coin when I looked in the top. So I measure from there up to the surface of the water. Up to the surface of the water. I'm only 36 point five centimeters to the surface, not the top of the container. I'm measuring only to the surface. That's my first data point. To get my second data point, I simply dump out some water. I'm fortunate to have access to a tall container. By dumping out some water, okay, a little bit more, I'll get a new data point because now the coin is under a different amount of water. The coin is now under uh, a, a something on the order of 40 centimeters of water, roughly. I'll use 40. I see it's, uh, it's a tad, tad over 40, but about 40 centimeters of water, probably 40.2, but the table would probably be 40. Now I look in the top again, and I look at where I think the coin is. The apparent depth. I'm looking in the top to find the apparent depth. And it looks like the coin is there. Again, it's an optical illusion that's kind of hard to see unless you actually do this yourself. But the coin looks closer than it really is. Now I measure the depth of the coin under the surface of the water, not from the top of the container. Common mistake is to measure to the top of the container. No. The effect is being generated by the water. And so I measure from where I saw the coin up to where the water is, about 32.5 some centimeters, roughly. That's the depth of the water. That's the image depth, sorry. That's the image depth, the depth of the image. The image is where the coin appears to be. It's not really there. It just looks like it's there. It's imaginarily there. That's where the word image comes from. The word image comes from the word imaginary. And so I repeat the process, dumping out some water to get a, a shallower depth. I just keep... And this now gets me a new depth. There's my coin sitting on the right side of the container. And I can now measure the object depth, O. This will be the object depth. The object depth is the actual depth of the coin. And the actual depth of the coin is now sitting down around about 28.2 some centimeters underwater. Roughly 28.2 centimeters underwater. I'll then do the same thing of looking in the top, figuring out where it looks like the coin is, point at it, and then use my meter stick in this case to measure from where it looks like the coin is to where the coin was 23.5 centimeters one more time i've dumped out water i've now got it really shallow about 12.5 centimeters of water object depth and i'll now graph it the table for the mirror data is set up with o1 as the x-axis that's the object distance in centimeters and I1 will be the y-axis, the y-data. That's the image distance, the distance of the object behind the mirror, where it appeared to be, not where it really is. So I've got O1 and I1 as my variables. The analysis 
will be I1 is approximately equal to K1 O1, where I and O are lowercase letters, I for image, O for object distance. I get a slope K1 of 0 0.965 or about 0 0.97. There are no units. The x-axis is in centimeters and the y-axis is in centimeters. So this is a unitless constant, a unitless slope. The apparent depth in the water data can be seen here. O2, I2. I'm using the object distance and is the actual depth of the coin. I2 is the apparent depth, how far underwater the coin appeared to be. And you can see my values there in this table from my recording, uh, the values that I saw. The analysis for this will be that I2 is approximately K2O2. The value of K2 will be 0 0.79. Again, there'll be no units. It'll turn out that the index of refraction for water will be roughly equal to 1 divided by K2. The index of refraction is the inverse of the slope of our line that we've got here. I've calculated that below, and I 1 over K2 is about 1.263 or about 1.26. The index of refraction for water is actually a known value. While the index of reflection for a mirror is, is not something that we know because it's based on the curvature of the mirror, for water we do have an expected value and that value is 1.333. That means I can calculate a raw error as seen here of about negative 0.069 and a percentage error. That percentage error of negative 0.05 means I'm only 5% below the value published in books. I'm 5% low. That's excellent agreement, good to excellent, on the borderline between good to excellent agreement. I've accurately measured with a very crude piece of equipment. I've measured to within 5% the actual index of refraction for water. That's my percentage error, and you can report that in your lab report. Just a quick overview. You can put both on the same graph. You can see that here. The mirror data in blue, the apparent depth in water data in orange. They can actually go on both graphs, but your report is going to include both tables, both analyses, and go ahead and report that raw error and percentage error for your index of refraction of water. Uh, in lab, we'll have access to tall tubes of water. This will be a challenging lab to potentially do at home. Uh, maybe if you live in Wolia, you can go out on the reef and do it. But it would be difficult at home. You would need to find some fairly tall or deep containers to work with. Uh, or, as I say, some piece of reef. And you need measuring equipment that, could, uh, that you could use. So a little challenging if you have to do this one at home. The mirror one may be a bit easier.